here are five curiosities of the most diverse province in China you should know. But if it's the first time you hear about Yunnan, go check the first video, where I show you the two most fascinating places I've been and gives you a taste of what Yunnan is like. It is home to many religions, such as Buddhism, Taoism or Islamism, which are among the predominant. Other minor religions specific to ethnic minorities are also followed. Tibetan Buddhism is practiced in the five Lamaist monasteries in the region. This is the one I visited near the city of Lijiang, and this one is the biggest Tibetan monastery in Yunnan, home for 700 monks. In the border with Myanmar, there is the region of Sichuan Pana, or simply called Pana. The main religion follow is Theravada Buddhism, which was spread through Myanmar and became the main religion believed in by the Thai ethnic group. As of today, religion in China is being tightly controlled or restricted, both physically and online. Some people refer to Bana as the Southeast Asia of China. The tropical weather, their customs, clothing, religion, the language, all sharing commonalities with its neighboring countries. The Water Splashing Festival is the most important event for the Thai ethnic group, lasting three days in mid-April and meaning the celebration of their new year. We cycle to a Thai village and we watch a recreation of it. They put on their finest clothes, they bath the Buddha and splash water at each other. Apart from the fun part, water is regarded as a symbol of religious purification and splashing water to someone means wishing them good luck. Have you heard or tried poor tea before? Poor is one of the most sought after teas in the world. It's a tea that gets better with age. There are two types, raw and ripe. The first one harvested and stored naturally, and the second undergoes a fermentation process. When serving it, a particular brewing method is followed to enhance its taste. It was originated thousand years ago in Yunnan province one of the high producing areas where the large leaf tea trees grow, and it is historically part of China's tea trade with other nations. As you might know, each Chinese region has its own food specialty. Even inside Yunnan, you might find a wide variety of local foods. Misheng, or this particular type of rice noodle, is the most famous local snack in Yunnan. The process of production is complicated and time-consuming, but I guess that is what makes it tasty and tender. It is all fresh rather than dried. A traditional dish made of misheng is translated as cross-bridge rice noodles, which was named after a legend. It is served with a bowl of hot broth, rice noodles and a dozen of small plates, all served separately. Everything is then put in the soup, following a specific order, and the heat of it will make all the ingredients cooked in a short time. In China, there are 55 officially recognized ethnic groups. In addition to the Han minority, the one I belong to, which represents over 90% of the Chinese population. Yunnan is the province with more concentration of different ethnic groups. Among the 55, 25 are from this province, and 38% of its population belongs to these minorities. Could you imagine how a process of identifying ethnic minorities is achieved? What specific criteria could be followed when classifying people and cultures? It definitely does not sound like an easy task. In the first census of the PRC, carried out in late 1953, officials tabulated over 400 different responses to the question of Mintu or ethnic identity. 
However, only 55 of these were officially recognized, which entailed a remarkable level of categorical compression from 400 potential categories to under 60. Yunnan province was the most dramatic case. More than half came from Yunnan. The Ethnic Classification Project was a collective term for a series of communist era expeditions wherein ethnologists and linguists set out to determine once and for all the precise and national composition of the country, a history of identification rather than of identities. This whole ethnic minority subject is an intricate issue. How does one proceed in categorizing the population? From 400, why did they get to under 60? And above all, what happened with the unrecognized minorities? I think it's a deep topic worth diving into.